baby's home Cairo Cairo is my baby's home One bad Cairo night won't be long Women in Cairo They will treat you kind and sweet Women in Cairo They will treat you kind and sweet Catch you around and take you off your feet knock you peach you and cut you too shoot and knock you peach you and cut you too they get through the graveyard then number 100 finally there great to see you guys I hope everything is fine with you I'm uh, kind of I'm still preparing now um, this is a, a kind of roundup of, of a great two-year period of things that I uh, been doing and experimenting too much with moving microphones sometimes hits you right back so this is how it should sound so uh, I've been live streaming since January 22 and uh, I didn't really expect it's gonna be this fun this much fun and uh, that I'll be so consistent that I'll be doing it for two years so today is a little bit of a roundup, a little bit of a celebration. I don't know. I even got some confetti here around somewhere. And um, I'd like to say hi to you guys who came today. First, Patrick. Great to see you. Happy Blue Monday. Thank you. Milan, Ohio attack. Great to see you too. Jonas, my faithful retreater. Hi. Mac is here. Mac is back. Why did I click on that? Sorry. And our good friend Graham from UK. Great to see you too. I hope uh, more people will uh, join us so that we can have a real discussion and maybe um, talk a little bit about the future and what I'm about to do and uh, what you maybe think that I should be doing. And there is a little poll uh, in the chat 
which you can uh, I cannot see what you uh, chose for, for alternative there actually I don't know how to do it because I don't have a web browser open here so I can't reach it from this streaming software but I will look at it afterwards so don't forget to hit the like button the like on the hundredth episode yeah good so how are you guys and there is Gore joining us from Holland there's Robert Johnson, a singer with guitar. There's Stefan Grossman, a teacher with a guitar. And there's Mac, a poet with a guitar. <laughs> so, salute, salute. Thank you so much, Gore. So nice of you. All right. So, today it's uh, going to be a regular blues back up, just a little bit more up tempo. And then we'll do a kind of a low, laid back finger picking in the style of Kansas City Blues. So that's what we're gonna be warming up with. And in the meantime, while I'm playing and you're listening or maybe playing with me, um, give me your thoughts in the chat. What do you think I should do next? Either with a live stream or with the channel, um, the whole online presence of me, what would you like me to do? Maybe something I'd like, I, I should be doing more of, something that I should cut down on. Uh, I know I, I, I should cut down on talking too much, but uh, that's not so easy. So let's celebrate for a second, and uh, then we'll just uh, go on with the regular blues backup, key of E, and let's go.
Ooh, I got carried away. Good. So uh, that was a kind of faster kind of shuffle. Uh, a combination of kind of Chicago blues shuffle and uh, some Brian and McGee um, influence stuff. And uh, yeah, uh, that was that. So let's go to the other one which is going to be in the style of kind of Kansas City Blues. There are many songs in the same manner uh, where we just uh, switch between those three chords. But there, there's one a little bit, uh, I think I'm going to use some diminished chords as well in between. And, and I'll let you know what I, was, what I was doing afterwards. So let's do it.
sets the similarity between these two backups. The first one was shuffly. This one was kind of laid back and another kind of rhythm. But they shared many notes. They shared many grips. And uh, there was this little thing I wanted to show you. When I go to the chord of B. After that, I have either... So it's just a B, but then I move the second uh, uh, mid middle finger to the sixth string on the fourth fret. I just keep the rest of the grip as in the B. I just move this finger up, move to the fourth fret, and I'm still picking here with my picking hand the sixth, third, and the first string. You can also play a little bit of melody, a little bit of melody here. So it's fourth fret, pick sixth, third, first string. And then when I move to the third fret, I release the first string so I don't press it with my left hand. So it's open and go back to the B, but now I'm following it with this big bass. So the next, li next lick is... So everything is based on... Usual turnaround in standard tuning. Some kind of combine it. of this rhythm are bass, chord, bass, chord, bass, chord, bass, chord. And then the melody on the treble strings is... So when the finger grabs the fret here on the first fret, third string, that's when I play the big bass. So I pinch together the fourth string here and the fretted second fret on the second string. So that's the first. An open string and then I pinch those two. And then So if you want to be, you know, by the book, so it's sixth, fourth, sixth, fourth. But I always like to include a couple of more strings down underneath that, so it's a kind of chord play, more of. Then I just replace some of the chord shape. So when that is mastered and you know then there's some some room for syncopation to do like uh quite often and I really recommend everybody to try it uh, uh, at least is to come to the chord that you're about to play. I love these kind of you know, small uh, moves like instead of just waiting to from E and then B. If I would sing this here walking down Main Street Going down the hill, looking for the woman they call her see She done moved to Kansas City. She done moved to Kansas City. She done moved. Honey, where they won't lie you. And 
this is great for the first verse, so to say. Already in the next verse, I would add some more happening in between vocal lines and the chords would be like a, a go down to Kansas City. I'm going to move to Kansas City now. I'm going to move to Kansas City. Honey, where they want are you? And so on. So it's not too much happening between uh, the vocal lines, which I always advocate. Like, don't play too much on the guitar, wh guitar while you're singing, telling a story, because that's the most important part when you're performing. And, uh, uh, but in some circumstances, this is not in the way. There's a way to play it so that you're not in the way. Just play it softer. Like, uh, I'm gonna move to Kansas City. I'm gonna move to Kansas City. I'm gonna move to Kansas City. Only way they won't lie you. So I, I, I sing with my full voice and then I kind of pick very, very um, softly behind it. And then when I finish singing, uh, right all the world are you. So now I'm kind of more concrete on the guitar. And as soon as I start singing again, I go like a, uh, I back off a little bit on the guitar. Yeah, so uh, that was that. Guitar backups, we're done. So, um, hi. Let's see if somebody else has joined us. Yes, Helcon. Hello. Thank you so much. I'm glad you like it. Good. So, guys, um, what is on your minds when it comes to me continuing doing this online on YouTube? My thoughts are kind of mi mixed because. I love doing live streams, but I've done hundreds of them, which means I'm not tired. It, it, it's not that. It's just I need a, I need a new challenge. I have a couple of students who who I teach online, which is also very cool. A couple of groups that I teach. We meet like once a week, maybe bi-weekly sometimes. Depends. So I'm doing that. But I still haven't started recording those real instructional videos. Whoever goes back in the history of my live streams in the playlist uh, can easily see what I was kind of talking about in each of the live streams. And if you go to that particular live stream, you will see chapters and it's always easy to get back to the backups. And when I look at some analytics of, of YouTube, how uh, people are watching these videos, there are not so many views of the whole thing. So nobody or not many people come back and listen to the whole live stream. A couple of the regulars who kind of hmm, are here usually and then miss one or two episodes. You know, I've got some comments afterwards from them, which kind of showed that Oh yeah, okay, they've seen it all. So they commented on several parts of that live stream. So, but that's other thing. Those are my aficionados, fans and friends, right? But average people who maybe don't even play guitar so much, uh, who are there mostly for the backups, those parts of uh, early live streams are the most played ones. So if you look on YouTube, there's this kind of uh, little line over the whole uh, duration of, of the video let's see live stream always more than an hour but then always in the beginning is like a peak which means the most visits and most returning visits are on the backup so I guess somebody is really practicing to that which is great but that also requires them to either bookmark that video bookmark on that part of the live stream uh, usually that video takes a little bit longer to, to load when you kind of click on that link and go there. Then you need to kind of engage actively and loop that part so that it will play maybe two or three times in a row. Although, yeah, I kind of 
play these backups at least like four or five minutes, sometimes six. So it's like, um, yeah. And uh, yeah, so that's that. My idea is to go down in the numbers when it comes to live streams, when it comes to live streams, that I go, uh, I think monthly live streams, and then to have at least one video a week that would be instructional video of some kind, um, a couple of backups that I could just record only backup in standard tuning, in the key of A, in the key of E, uh, open tuning backups, all kinds of backups, maybe five, six different videos, but only backup that will be like 10 minutes of just backup. Um, that's the one idea. And then I've kind of explained many songs during these two years in the live streams. And I did go into detail when it comes to some parts of the songs and whatever, but I've never really kind of did the, the whole thing in depth. Let's say, this is the song, this is the melody, how you play it with slide. Um, this is, these, these are the chords. This is how you play those chords. This is how you play all together. And just to make a very compressed, shorter video. So that's my idea to do um, uh, continuing further on during this year and then see what happens. Abby, great to see you. Thank you. <laughs> Centenary, yeah. Thank you so much. Dan, all right. Oh yeah, I guess they are. Um, I'm, I'm really trying to tune up uh, to the tuning machine and usually it's okay with harmonicas. And um, yeah, I'm glad you said that because I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of my uh, harmonica player from Serbia, Pera Joe, who, how he would, sometimes when I play these backups, I'm thinking about his playing. Okay, what would Joe play here? Whatever. And just take him. To, to entertain myself what I'm doing these backups. Basically, uh, if anybody would go and listen only uh, through the all the backups, uh, I kind of tended to, to do quite simple stuff in the beginning, but then I added more and more later on. And sometimes it felt like, shit, this is kind of, this should be non-interfering, non-disturbing, backup that you can play on top of and right so so i had some feedback from people saying uh, man I'm, I'm listening and analyzing your backups more than i'm playing with you but that's also okay yeah it is okay so uh maybe i could also do videos where the backup to let's say slow blues and e can be done in like three grades of you know how much you would play during that backup, and then explaining everything in detail. Either as, hmm, what do you think? Should those be separate videos? Like five, six videos of kind of more complicated backup and one five, six minute video with very basic back backup. Hmm, food for thought, yeah. Did you try to play slide over with, what do you mean? Are you asking me or are you, what do I mean by that, Gore? Please explain. Yeah. should be a cable there yes I'm gonna plug in for a second okay if I mute uh, the guitar microphones yep's they are muted now so it's only my overhead mic that's on and uh, the guitar is now connected to the uh, pedal board, 
and going right into the interface here. And that's also something that I'd like to develop a channel uh, towards as well, which means plugging in the acoustic guitar, analyzing uh, you know, what kind of combinations of hardware you could use and pedals in between the guitar and the interface and the amplifier. I mean, th there are so many things you could do here. It's like, yeah. So that's also one of the directions. So it'll be kind of instructional videos, um, maybe even reviews of some, uh, yeah, let me know. What do you think if I should do reviews of hardware? Let's say preamps, amps, pedals, uh, effect processors, whatever, because all that goes into playing the acoustic guitar. So um, I know that I've tried in a couple of live streams to talk about kind of things behind the scenes of being a musician, like uh, organizing yourself, kind of, you know, productivity, how to manage us, manage ourselves, not the time. You cannot manage time. It's infinite. It just goes. Uh, but ourselves within time frame that we have during a day. I'm extremely interested in that, not just because I'm getting older and you realize like, okay, I'm not going to live forever and I need some things to be done before I really retire or do something else. But um, of course, I'll never stop playing. But the fact is that, that uh, there's so much that comes into, okay, what makes it possible for me to have at least an hour a day to, to play the guitar if I feel like it? Or just skip. And when I talk to people, uh, so many of my, my, my colleagues, my, my students, people I teach, people I meet, I jam with sometimes, they, they very often say that, oh, I don't have the time to practice. I can't find the time for just being along with my guitar and taking it easy and all that. And uh, I thought, okay, I could maybe dedicate a live stream or two to these things, but uh, I kind of, I almost didn't get any views on those. It's like people who were there, okay, they kind of coped up with me, like, okay, yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. Let me see. Um, oh, you mean uh, that I kind of uh, do the overdubs to like uh, record myself when they play a slide on top of that, maybe even two slides. Oh, yeah, I do it all the time, actually. Since, uh, I mean, Gore is, you know, well, um, he knows a lot about my work with Sam Mitchell, and he's a Sam Mitchell fan himself. So uh, he knows that, let's say, Sam and I used to play uh, slide in harmonies. And the only two people who did that before us, as far as we knew, I've been discussing this with Sammy, uh, there was uh, Ry Cooter and David Lindley. They had, uh, in, let's say, I saw them live in 91, and uh, they played a couple of songs with two slides, and uh, that sounded amazing, right? But then when I started playing with Sammy, and we started doing that as well, it was like, first, it was you know, totally different songs compared to those that they played. And then uh, I really couldn't find anybody else who was doing that. So I was like a... We were like very proud of that. Going, yeah, it's Gouda Lindley and Simon Mac. Yeah, good. That was cool. But I, I do it, for, first of all, to just experiment because it's cool. And uh, I've even, you know, laid down some, some real kind of slide uh, played chords as backup. And then I played slide melodies on top of that for the fun of it. Yeah. Good. So, Patrick. I will write this down. Thank you, sir. So reviews are good. And there's also this thing that uh, kind of YouTube algorithms know what I'm doing. And they have been pushing these live streams to audiences that like live streams. So when I look at uh, where people are coming from, apart from you guys who are regulars, and you are 
10, 15 people who kind of come back and forth when you can, you're here, when you can't, you're not here, but usually you come. And uh, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. It's amazing. And uh, I really found that to be most inspiring because I knew, all right, Patrick's going to be there. David's going to be there. Uh, you know, Hokan's going to be there. Jonas, uh, Milovan. Uh, yeah, some others, of course. Uh, Abby started coming here all lately and all that. So it was like, a, shit, I, you know, I don't want to disappoint them. Okay, maybe you wouldn't be like disappointed if I didn't show up uh, a week or two or something. You, you, you know uh, about, you know, how busy we can all be and all that. But that was a really, really great inspiration for me to come and just do it every week. And it, I, it, it taught me a lot. And, you know, those algorithms that YouTube shows, uh, they, they say that uh, my video has been recommended to people who like live streams. But there are many more people who like guitar playing videos. And I've watched many, many guitar colleagues' channels on YouTube just to see, okay, how are these guys doing it? Because no matter if there are already, I don't know, five slide guitar channels or people who play slide online and, and show stuff and all that, it's great. It's not competition in any ways. It's no matter how they do, they can't do what I do, and I cannot do anything of what they're doing. So it's like, it's about the personality who's doing that. So, you know, I feel, I feel really confident about that, so no problem. But it's now very uh, common way of, you know, thinking about your content on the YouTube channel that you need to be niched. You need to be like one thing only. So I can't make like two or three videos about guitar playing and then do something about productivity and then show some computer stuff that I'm using to, to be productive as a musician, at least not in the beginning until I kind of get to know more people or more people get to know me. And, you know, you, know, you have to earn some confidence uh, from people to like to trust you and say, okay, He's playing, he's doing all that. Let's see what else he's got to say. So it's okay, they will still come. But in the beginning, I will really need to concentrate only on guitar playing content. So I guess around 20, 30 videos uh, now in the future are only going to be about guitar playing. Yeah. <laughs> Patrick, if you disappear, I'd cry for a year. <laughs> I'm so sorry that that um, my live streaming software cannot pick up these crazy icons from YouTube from the chat. Now I'm not going to disappear. I'm just going to kind of go into, let's say, posting these guitar playing videos, and of course, then if I do a, a monthly live stream, that's going to be maybe a shorter one. Maybe you don't have to give me so much of your time. Maybe you will do it for about a half an hour, 40 minutes or something. And then um, we could maybe talk about what happened during that month. Maybe I can prepare something a little special for, for that live stream. Maybe, uh, let's say, a parts of what's coming up during the next month or something. So to kind of, I'd like to continue, you know, with this little community here. And it's, it's, uh, it's not going to be easy to leave it, but I know that I don't have the time otherwise. If I do live streams every week, then I don't have the time to do the videos. Yunas, thank you. I'm writing that down as well. Lick and Grill Genealogy. Thank you. So, um, you remember last week we did the... Um, okay. Swing low, sweet chariot, right? And, um, and then I was fooling around with that song and I was kind of going into my, my pedal board and uh, there's this cool little... Uh, uh, 
I hope it's not buzzing too much in the background, but uh, Do you hear anything uh, kind of strange about this tuning? It's D open with a twist. And I presented this tuning during um, yeah, one of the previous live streams. I, I forgot now which song I played or how I did it. But basically, it's an open D, but we keep a second string. Let me show you that here. So the second string is still uh, a B, like in the standard tuning. So it's D, B, and then F sharp, D, A, D. And speaking of Sam Mitchell, uh, he used this tuning in one of the songs on his uh, first album. And uh, I actually didn't know how he did it. I kind of let that song kind of, you know, go uh, along uh, other songs that I just couldn't comprehend and I didn't really know. I was too young. I was like 20 years old and uh, I don't know. I just kind of let it go. And then uh, when I started playing with Sammy, he played that live. So, Gore, I think you're going to be recognizing this and most of you who've been listening to Sam Mitchell. So just listen to this. because I might get copyright claim from YouTube for playing other people's music in full. So I'll just kind of cut it there. But there are chord changes that go only by just playing them with a the slide. So... So it's fourth chord, G, A, and back to D. And then we go to fifth uh, fret to the uh, fifth, eight, and now twelve, eleven, ten, nine, and then we go to the second fret. That's it. So I think I will do one of the videos for the upcoming content, Laguna Luna by Sam Mitchell. Explain in detail the best I can. I'm not sure I'll be picking each note exactly, but the idiom, uh, the way he played this song and the way exactly what you and I said earlier, because that's what inspired me to, to, to show you this lick and groove so the lick can be like okay he knew this hawaiian open d tuning which is quite often used in a lap steel style so from up above playing the slide but then sammy had these wonderful chord changes that he just did, didn't do the 12 bar progression he did the first on the chord one and then he went to chord five So on. So what I'm using now is I'm using reverb, and I'm using uh, tap tremolo from the pedal board. So if I uh, disengage tap tremolo, listen to this. So this is only reverb. Which means it's a clean chord. It's only re reverb and it's not even fully. So if I would do it like Sammy did live, 
he had loads of reverb. So, uh, okay, let, let, try, let me try to emulate that. So this is both tremolo and lots of reverb. I, I have kind of, on my pedal board, the volume pedal is when it's totally up, which means on zero, it's around 60% reverb. And when I press it totally, then it's around 100. So you can, you can you know, adjust that per pedal board, per pedal, so, and per effect. So, um, this is how it will sound with lots of reverb. So, the, I'll go back to 60%. So, if I just play the chord with the tremolo, So here, the tremolo is going wah, 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 wah. And that amount of rhythmic, uh, these modulations, is something that you can adjust in the tremolo, which means... That would be suitable for like rhythms like... If I would play something fast, like a... Okay, it's not totally in a way, but uh, it's not within the same kind of rhythmic pattern. So if, if you have the intensity of that uh, effect quite high, then it will interfere if you don't really kind of follow the music, follow the groove. So that's what's going to be, uh, yeah. Yes, Milan, it's actually a, a D6 because the note of B is a sixth in in uh, in that chord. So, uh, okay, how about this? Listen to this one. Uh, I'll play this uh, song and you'll recognize it. I'm sure you will. And in this tuning, it's very easy to follow that melody and there are some nice chords uh, oh, okay, if I remember, I really didn't prepare this, it just got to me now. Oh, yeah. Stand by me, folks. Stand by me and follow me on my continuing path on YouTube. That's going to be great. Yeah. So, what else could be done with with this kind of, with this tuning? I usually have some stuff with kind of uh, D six or G six, but I still kind of go from from the regular uh, open tuning. But then I add those chord shapes because this can be in a way because if you just want to play uh, bluesy stuff and go, it doesn't sound like that so that note I will have to kind of press on the third fret on the second string to have this yeah it's not really that but for you know, songs like this, and uh, w when you find that this lick, when the night has gone, right? I cannot make it this beautiful if I'm in, in regular open D tuning. Let me show you. So now, so if I want to play the same thing with the slide, then I have to do it like this. 
So it's it's a jump first. So I don't have this do do kind of three connected notes like I had in the Hawaiian tuning. Of course, you, you can emulate it. You can you can go so you can start from the fourth fret and then just glide. Is joining us. Great. Hello, Hedda. Or just under the shut up and go retire. I can. <laughs> okay, that's from the announcement for this kind of hundredth video, hundredth live stream. Specific song tutorials. Okay. Let me know which ones. You guys are more than welcome to reach me to me on on socials because uh, let's say uh, it's. Homesickmag.live, homesickmag.com, uh, here on YouTube, at Twitter is at homesickmag, and of course my email, homesickmag at gmail.com. So it's quite easy to reach me, and um, just let me know if you have any wishes for songs, especially when, when it comes to, you know, Americana early stuff, blues, folk, folk music, maybe country. I, I was thinking about not niching myself to only blues, um, but it will be within traditional styles. I'm not going to be doing, uh, maybe that's also kind of in between. Like, okay, so what if I have a nice light version of a nice kind of soul song from the 50s or something where do i draw the line do i draw the line where the music is or where the music style is so usually like well do whatever you please that's great but if you if you build a kind of following on one particular style of playing and one technique of playing then it's very difficult to kind of stretch too much so um I don't know. That's what I've been thinking about a lot. And uh, I will continue thinking about that while I'm doing those uh, really basic instructional videos just to start with. So in front of me, I have the first thing when, you, when you're about to, to start something new, if you want to teach somebody, then you really know who your audience is. And uh, apart from a couple of you guys here who are uh, not over 60, uh, YouTube statistics show that my viewers are 60 plus. And uh, if you look who, who's my, uh, let me see, who are my participants in my uh, guitar retreat, that's usually who are my age, like I'm 64 now, so my age and older, a couple of people who are a little bit younger, but basically that's it. And... It's usually people who uh, don't play too much or they play guitar as a hobby or they haven't played for many years and now they're retired, they have more time and yeah. So basically that's, that's my kind of audience and that's going to be my target audience because these styles that I'm playing, they are old. It's like, man, you old. <laughs> I've heard that from some of my uh, really great friends on, on, on YouTube who are like in early 40s, mid, late 30s, early 40s. It's like they talk about themselves as, well, now that I'm getting old, I really don't know which direction in life should I take. So come on, man, you're half the age I am for the first. And then it's like, they, they look at me sometimes and, and ask me, like, what? Why do you bother retire? As my daughter just wrote down. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, this is cool. Abby used to be uh, head of uh, workshop leader in, in on the Blues Week. And we were in Northampton those years. And Hedda was there. And that crazy group. And you sang the song, My Man. Dee -dee -dee -dee. All right, let's rem remember Marion, uh, who is not with us anymore, unfortunately. But uh, I'm giving Marion nice thoughts. Yeah, you will send me a list. That's great. Thank you. Wow, this is a noble visit. Uh, I'm still listening to you two hours later, Tanzania, Tanzania right now. Yeah, Tom is traveling all around the world, Globetrotter. That's great. But I will see you in Omo in Sweden in July, and then we'll have some fun. Anders, thank you for coming in. Shena, shena. Jesus on the main line. I will do that video, definitely. Are you hearing this buzz in the background? Because I'm hearing from my pedal board. If I now mute that guitar, it should be quiet. But you know, sometimes that's a good sign that, okay, the effect is on because it's on in the background as well before you start playing, yeah. Okay, Anders, uh, so let's say, if you would play Jesus on the main line, would this Tre uh, tremolo effect sounds really nice. Yeah. that kind of really alter the sound of the guitar. If you play too many notes in a row, uh, they're going to kind of cover up uh, the effect itself. So we need to use the effect to our advantage, which means that when I play it now behind the voice, I just play kind of one grip per chord. So he's on the main line. So I let the effect breathe. It's like he's on the main line. Tell him what you want. I'm playing the notes kind of short, but I'm let, letting the reverb kick in and do its own thing. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. So that's the way. Then when you play solos, but maybe you can play. traditional styles with uh, kind of effects that I I find interesting uh, when it comes to you know arranging a song of course it sounds nice acoustically uh, mm. yeah of course it sounds nice but uh, I kind of go back and forth in between these things with effects, without effects. I don't know. All right, let me see what's happening in the chat. Oh, yeah, we're remembering the blues week, the blues bells. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah. 
Uh, that was great. Well, anyway, guys, thank you so much for coming today. I'm not going to take up any more of your time. I am really grateful for the tips you gave me and some nice thoughts. And congratulations. It's really nice. And um, let's say it's going to be a month before we see each other again. I'm not sure how it's going to work. I'm going to uh, kind of announce the live stream on YouTube. And if you're going to get the notification or not, uh, if you're subscribers, I think you will get a notification or it will show up in your feed when you come to YouTube, maybe a couple of days prior. But anyway, um, count on the end of April that um, I'm going to be doing the live stream. And then we'll see what happened within these uh, 30 days. Uh, if everything goes according to plans, I'm going to have four videos up there. Which is great to be, you know, to keep myself accountable. And you guys should keep me accountable. Maybe you can just send me a message on Facebook or somewhere. Hey man, how are the videos going? Oops, sorry, I didn't have the time. No, I will find the time. I will allocate the time. Yeah. Good. Uh, so... Tom says, Dragon, your blues is awesome. Same as mine. <laughs> yes. Our blues is awesome. Blues is awesome even when it's sad. Uh, there's this misconception about blues that it's sad music. You have to be down to play it. And you have to be down to be able to play it or to listen to it. And uh, nope. I think that blues is music of hope. Blues is uh, much more than that. It's much deeper. And, you know, everybody's welcome to play or listen to blues. No exceptions. Good. All right. Sensei, thank you. You're Sensei. I'll see you on the other side. Good. All right, guys. Don't forget the socials and uh, just let me know if there's anything else you'd like me to cover or do when I start making these shorter videos and all that. And thank you again from my heart for following me along the way from January 22. Many of you have been here from the beginning, so I'm really grateful for that. Thank you for the inspiration and I will see you in a month. Have a great one. All the best.
Don't you shake my tree Get out of my origin Let my feet just be Now she's gone Now don't worry But I'm sitting on top of the world Sitting on top of the world Now she's gone I don't worry But I'm sitting 